Welcome back, everybody. Fire the episode three. What a show we have for you today. A lot of stuff going on around Brook Hill. Uh, just so much going on, so much positive happening. And we got, we got a big show today. We're going to talk to head football coach Scott Ryle about the big win on Friday over Life Oak, Life Oak Cliff in the American State Bank Warrior Bowl. We're going to talk to tr- uh, cross-country head coach Josiah White about the Warrior Run and the Warrior 5K and the success that we had Saturday with all that. Then we're going to talk to volleyball uh, head coach Mika Hubbard as the volleyball team now heads into district play this Tuesday. So just so much going on. Before we get too far in, I want to once again thank the people over at NetSN, Brett Swinney and his crew, for all the help that they give us here at Brook Hill Athletics with uh, both Fire the Cannon and the podcast, as well as uh, streaming athletic events. They were there last Tuesday for the volleyball game against Westwood. They were there Friday for the Warrior Bowl. They'll be there this Friday for the big game against Grace. And just super excited about the relationship and the partnership that we have with NetSN and everything they're doing for us, including of course, this podcast that uh, so many of you have listened to, and we appreciate that uh, as we have uh, really, really set some high marks in terms of who's listening and how many people are listening and all that kind of stuff. So thank you uh, once again for that. Uh, I mentioned uh, the Warrior Bowl last Friday, and we're going to talk to Coach Ryle here in just a second about uh, that. And we're going to talk about, uh, he and I visited about the atmosphere and the crowd and uh, if you were at the Warrior Bowl on Friday, you know how much of a special environment that is and how that went uh, Friday with the veterans and the first responders and everybody being honored. And then uh, just the, the great atmosphere. Of course, the big win uh, helps as well. Uh, but just so much good happened on Friday. And then Saturday continued with the Warrior Run and the, the 5K. And, uh, you know, I know that, that on behalf of, of Coach Dawkins, the athletic department, uh, the entire athletic department, uh, thank you to all of you who stepped in and helped. For those of you who volunteered to uh, help at the tailgate or someone who helped uh, sell tickets or sell programs or whatever it was, whatever volunteer role you had on Friday or Saturday, we really uh, do appreciate that because, quite honestly, everything we do uh, only is successful because of, of the the help and the support that we get from every one of you. So uh, thank you once again for all that. Real quick before we uh, get into Coach Ryle, of course, this uh, weekend, this Friday, uh, the the uh, big rivalry game uh, with Grace, that kickoff Friday at 7.30, and uh, another big crowd expected. The Riled Up tailgate uh, will kick off at 5 o'clock on Friday, so make sure you're there for that. Pep rally, 1 o'clock on Friday. Walk to the Rock, 12.45, so make sure you're there for all of those activities. It's going to be a fun day and a fun night, and of course, a huge rivalry game on Friday night to top it all off. So let's get into uh, my visit with head football coach Scott Rao. Uh Coach, a little, uh, little nicer weekend, I guess, after a win on Friday night as we put up a, a big 61-point performance, 61-12 or 12 win over Life Oak Cliff. And, uh, Coach, I know that a lot of big things and a lot of great things happened that week. But kind of what were your overall thoughts? What were you most impressed with? You know, I, I thought we did a good job playing four quarters. Um you know, that's one thing we didn't do the previous week, and I think that was our big focus. We got we got to come out strong and finish strong. So I thought we did a really good job of doing that on both sides of the ball. I think that that from being around you, I know that one of the things you really enjoy is when you have a game where you can get a lot of your young guys in too. And we were able to get – I don't want to say all because I'd, I'd hate to miss somebody, but we got, I would say, 90, 95% of our JV kids in at the end of that game Friday night also. Yeah, that's, that's just something that, you know, they help us prepare as we go throughout the whole week and – when we get a we get a lead like that, it's it's good to get those young guys on the field, and you know they make us better for Friday, so they deserve to play under the lights in front of the home crowd. You know, thinking back to the game and and uh, the way it started, uh, the offense had a 13-0 lead before they ever had a chance to even get on the field. Talk a little bit about those first. I would say the first six or seven minutes were really entertaining and really uh, had the energy going on the sideline. Yeah, you know, I heard a couple of offensive guys complaining, "Can we please get on the field?" But it was <laughs> it was pretty awesome to watch our defense. Um, stop them, and then we have a huge uh, special teams touchdown. That's a, that's how you always want to start a game. But uh, uh, I'm really proud of how the, the defense came out, and you know, special teams. When you couldn't score on set special teams, it's hard to lose a game for sure. It does help, and offensively, uh, a little more of a rhythm. It felt like on Friday night, and once again, we saw the ground game really pick up. And Braxton Durrett, who had another great game after what he had last week, but 
Talk a little bit about about we call him Trey Wiley, but Leland Wiley the third and and just a freshman, but has really been a spark in the first two weeks. You know, he's going to be a special player. Uh, Trey is, and you know, I love watching um, Braxton uh, Durrett just mentor him and, and help him get better because he knows that we are a better football team if we have two, and, and we also have Carlos back there as well that hasn't got him that many carries, but he's playing so much defense. So I feel like we have three really really good backs. Um, but uh, Trey is, is going to be a tremendous football player, especially only being a freshman. I'm, I'm excited for his future. I think one of the, the big takeaways, if, if you've watched the first two games, people who are listening that have watched the first two games, is we have had a lot of guys missing. And I think especially the offensive line is somewhere that obviously you really only talk about them when they play bad and they, and they haven't, especially with so many guys missing. We've got some guys really step in. Talk about that group and what they've been able to accomplish as we've kind of mixed and matched along the front so far. You know, we started camp, I think it, we had envisioned, uh, envisioned a certain five uh, guys starting, and we've just had some crazy illnesses and sickness that to where we're, all those guys haven't been together. But, you know, the guys have stepped up and done a really good job. I mean, to ask a, a freshman, uh, Luke Scott, to step in, I mean, he – I don't think he in his wildest dreams thought he'd be starting. Um, he's done a heck of a job. Um, and then there's some other guys, C.J. Bird. He, he's done a great job so far this year. And, and then you got your your other guys um, – uh, Luke Middleton and, and Aaron, he, he's done a heck of a job, and Luke Cundiff. But it's, it's been fun. Hopefully we'll get all five of those guys back um, as we go through the season. A lot of them aren't season-ending ending injuries. or A lot of them are just weird fluke things, and I'm excited to get them all back and, and all together. I really didn't envision this conversation going this way, but Luke Middleton, the guy you just mentioned, one of our, one of our three captains for the year, along with Colton Richards and, uh, and Braxton Durrett. You mentioned Braxton a minute ago, but – isn't it nice to talk a little bit about the leadership that we really have, even the guys who aren't captains, but specifically those three who were voted captains by the rest of the team? I, th- I think, it, you know, we talk about Luke. Um, you don't see too many captains uh, dishing out the water on Thursday night, and that's the type of kid <laughs> Luke Middleton is. He's, he's the one that's cleaning up the locker room, first one to clean up the locker room, first one to hand out water on Thursday. And, you know, and Colton, uh, Richards, and Braxton are the same type of people. They're just looking to serve others above themselves, which – that's what you want to captain. We talked about that a lot before we voted. You know, we, we want a person that uh, puts a team first. And I think all three of those guys um, do that. And you see that with Luke saying, hey, I'll, I'll play offensive line. And he's really not built like an offensive lineman. And obviously we'd love him not to be there, but he's stepping up as a captain and, and making us uh, go forward this year. You know, last thing about this, Luke hasn't let us forget either that the only two positions he has not played for Brook Hill football is quarterback and running back. And he doesn't let us forget that. He brings that up quite often, but – that says a lot about who he is and what he's done uh, over the last few years for us. And and uh, a, a kid that truly has worked hard, I, I think it was just a little over a year ago where he he was kind of a rotational player on JV and just decided he wasn't happy with that and has really just put the work in uh, and done that. So uh, good for him. But a win puts us at one and one. And now this week, uh, there's really no uh, – there aren't words sometimes for this week around Brook Hill. Everybody kind of knows it's important as, as Grace will be coming to town on Friday and – Without getting too far into it and too deep into it, Coach, talk a little bit about Grace and what you've seen about them on film. You know, uh, Grace is, is every, year in, year out, are well coached. Coach uh, Russell's done a heck of a job. Maddox on, Coach Maddox on, as being the OC, it's, uh, they're, they're well coached. They're a good football team. They move the ball well on offense, and their defense is super aggressive. It's going to be a good challenge for us. I mean, we have, uh, we have a, a tough, tough game for us on Friday. I know our kids are pumped up for it. Um, I don't think the records matter when you head to this game for either team. Yeah, it's going to be a very physical team, and um, I think it's the team that doesn't make as uh, the fewest mistakes going to win for sure. The team that makes the fewest mistakes will definitely win. You know, I was <clears throat> recording on another show uh, earlier today as well, and, and mentioned uh, you know Coach Bart Larocco who helps us out with our outside backers in our middle school. Uh, Coach Larocco played football at Navy, and you as an Army guy, and. Uh, as we practiced, we're recording this on Monday, as we practiced this morning, you actually brought up to the guys, those are the kind of games that the records really don't matter. What, what you've done so far doesn't matter. What you're going to do doesn't matter. It really does kind of stand alone. And talk a little bit about as a coach how you kind of have to prepare for that because to me it's you got to weather that storm early on. Like you have to let that play out and just make sure you don't make the mistake until you get there. Yeah, I think when you – coming out, the nerves are with you at the beginning of those type of games. And um, – you know, last year we were on one end of the field where, where we had uh, – Grace made some special teams mistakes in the first half, and then they settled down, and then we made mistakes in the end of the game. And um, 
you know, th those are just, you're, you're just really, sometimes you're a little tight coming out. So we just got to be patient and uh, just do our job and um, just can't, we can't force anything. I think sometimes in those situations and playing those type of games, you kind of force, you want things to happen now and we just got to settle in and, and do our job. And I think uh, as always, there'll be a huge crowd there Friday coach. And of course the tailgate will be going on and, I thought that the tailgate atmosphere was really good last year. We had the guard dogs. By the way, I didn't know there was 90 of those guys, but 90-something guard dogs last week uh, on the field and, and a lot of great things happening. But I know the environment, Coach, you, we as coaches and the players all appreciate everybody that's there and, and taking part in that. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, we'll have a good crowd, and, I'm, and I know Grace is going to bring a, uh, a big crowd. It's going to be a great environment for both teams, and I really look forward to the game on Friday. Perfect, Coach. We appreciate it as always, and we'll talk with you next week. All right, thanks. So that was Coach Ryan uh, talking about uh, the game uh, this past week in the American State Bank Warrior Bowl, the win 61-12 to over, over Life School Oak Cliff. And looking ahead to this Friday's matchup, the big one uh, against uh, the Grace Cougars, that kickoff will be Friday uh, at 7.30, and that'll be fun for sure if you are uh, new to Brook Hill and have not been a part of Brook Hill Grace uh, athletic rivalries, you want to make sure that you're there Friday for that. It is truly, as we talked about, you can throw the records out, you can throw everything out, uh, except for what happens on the field for those 48 minutes. It will be fun. Uh, a special treat for you before we move on and talk about some other things, as uh, NetSN did broadcast the game last Friday. Uh, the American State Bank Warrior Bowl was broadcast on NetSN on their YouTube page. You can go back and watch that now. It's They're going to be there forever. So uh, if you are maybe the parent of a boarding student and you want to watch that game, it's on the Internet. If you are a parent of a day student or you're a player listening and you want to go back and watch that game, go find it. Uh, you can search NetSN on YouTube and find that game. But one of the guys on the call for that one Friday night, and he'll be on the call again this Friday uh, for the Brook Hill Grace game, as uh, Vincent Johnson, Vince lives in Bullard, and he's one of the uh, analysts uh, for NetSN. And uh, I got a chance to sit down and talk to Vince a little bit uh, about this past Friday and kind of what may be on the horizon um, for Brook Hill football. All right, here we are with Vince. And Vince was on the call Friday night uh, as Brook Hill got the 61-12 win over Life School Oak Cliff. And Vince, first off, it was your first game night atmosphere, your first game right. night experience at Brook Hill. And I'm just curious as a, as an outsider, as your first time there, kind of what you thought, what were your overall impressions of just the night itself? Um, it, it was very, um, welcoming, you know, it, it was weird. It's like, I walked in there. It's like, I'd been there before, you know, like, I don't know, kind of like, you, you know, it just felt home, you know, actually, uh, when we were getting up to the, um, to the booth where we were going to be stationed at i mentioned that to some of the guys i said man it just feels like you know i don't know I, the way brook hill is about having us do this it just feels natural it, and it's a good atmosphere everybody here looks to be enjoying themselves uh it just it, it was it was an experience you know and, and it, it was a good night too really good night yeah, the, the win helps. Uh, and, of course, it being the Warrior Bowl and all the things going on there, it's not very often you go to a football game and you see all the veterans and the first responders yeah, absolutely. recognized. And, you know, honestly, I've, I've sat through now, uh, I guess, eight or nine of them. Or maybe not that many. We had not that long. But it's it's always uh, an emotional night, truthfully, uh, to get to see all those people out there. And you kind of – if you have a heart, I guess – it's easy to get emotional and enjoy that night specifically for that for those reasons. Yeah, uh, when we started recording, uh, the first thing uh, we talked about was like, man, we we want to get this moment. We want to get this recorded and put that on as well. Uh, it was a big night. Uh, you guys honoring the vets and everything. That was really cool. Yeah, that, I've I was never glad. actually been a part of that before. So. Yeah, I was glad when I went back and watched the the video uh, of the stream. I was glad to see you guys were able to get that because I think it is. So important. But let's talk about the game, Vince, because I know that you and I were just texting after the game about, you know, different things. But I know that the first six minutes especially, scoring on special teams, scoring on defense, I, I don't know how many games I've been a part of where the offense was up 13 and nothing and, and never touched the field. And never touched the field. Absolutely. <laughs> that was crazy. I, I uh, looked over at, at my buddy Keith and I said, 
the offense has got to feel really good right now because they're up and it was like you said 13 nothing they haven't even touched the field yet you know that was just amazing i was like it's gonna be a, you know if if it stays the course it's gonna be a good night <laughs> and well and it was a good night and you know i, I thought that one of the things that I appreciated you and Keith talking about during the broadcast was the fact that Life Oak Cliff had a ton of athletes. You know, there were some things that weren't necessarily going their way, uh, and, and credit our offensive and our defensive units for that. But at the same time, the, the score in the first half especially didn't really indicate what was going on on the field. I felt yeah. like they were always a play away. It, it didn't. Um, we were watching and – and there was just moments where you could see that they had talent. Obviously, they had speed. It's, it's just like they couldn't put it together uh, on the field. And actually, what I told Keith um, off uh, when we, we off the live was that man, you know, it seems like they just like maybe they got a few new guys in or something like that, and they're just now trying to put that together and make it work. I said because. What's hurt them the most is the penalty, seems like. You know, and, and you want to say um, that that's discipline, but when it starts to become like every first down is an offside <laughs> penalty, I'm starting to question how long has he been there? <laughs> yeah. He, that, that, you know, when it's that one or two players, it's like they may have just gotten there, you know, and, and they're trying to fit them into the offense. But, I mean, clearly the score at the half was – 34 to 6 I think. Yeah. And uh we both felt like that it was one play away and this game would have been different, you know, like and cuz they were even when they came out from the second half, they made a one big play and got down the field immediately and it was just like, see, there it goes. And then they just again started to shoot themselves in the foot. Uh now also credit to the the Brook Hill defense because they capitalized on every mistake uh and they executed uh, which made it extremely hard to come back from uh, the offside, the penalties and everything. It, it, it made it almost impossible at that point, right? Yeah, and, and it makes the play calling easier, right, when it's second and 15 or second and 20. Absolutely. You know, we, it makes it easier to <laughs> kind, of, kind of pin your ears back and go get them. And I'll be honest, you know, we, we only had one sack all night, which was – I kind of felt like going in, we'd get a few more sacks, but yeah. to only get the one, uh, they they were really good at getting the ball out of the hand quicker of the quarterback than maybe we thought they would be. Yeah. But defensively, two touchdowns, two pick sixes. Uh, Marlon Rattage got one in the first half. Santion Hernandez got one in the second half. One of our, our younger mm -hmm. new players getting some time there uh, at the end. Uh, and then the, the fumble recovery. Uh, it could have been four touchdowns, Vince, because remember, we got the fumble recovery on the one-yard line at the other end. Yes. Uh, they could have been yes. a score. So that was a huge night for the defense and the special teams. Talk a little bit about the offense because I'm curious, you know, I think Braxton Durrett's a name that people that have watched Brook Hill know he's, he carries the rock and does a, a great job for us. But I talked to Coach Ryle just a few minutes ago about Trey Watley, the freshman, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what he was able to do, 10 carries, 80-something yards, and a nice change of pace. What did you think about the running game with Durrett and Watley? I thought it was – it was very efficient. Y'all were, I mean, just not looking at the numbers here, I feel like y'all were averaging close to about six, seven yards per carry. It felt like at one point. And <laughs> even during our broadcast, I told Keith, I said, I got to give credit to this offensive line because they are opening up these gaps that are humongous. And, and you know, it makes it easier as a tailback when you're the first uh, bit of contact you get is at the second level. <laughs> You know, you've already got in the second and third gear by the time, and it's easy to kind of run through those guys who are standing there waiting on it, waiting on contact. So um, it, it, the running game was just – it was perfect. Honestly, the way y'all were running the ball, it really wasn't a necessity to pass at all. <laughs> no. But I understand, again, the way – when you're up like that, it's time to start trying some stuff. You know, let's let's see what we can make work. Uh, let's throw in some other guys and see what they can do. Um, but that run game, man, it, it seemed like you could have 
it, honestly, it seemed like you could have put me back there and I would have <laughs> at least got about three or four yards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you, the defensive coaches and our offensive line coach, both, we're just yelling the whole time, keep running it, keep running it, keep running yeah, it. <laughs> just keep going. I, I, like, I, I remember at one point y'all passed the ball, and I was just thinking, like, I, I wouldn't do that at all. <laughs> you going to stop me from running. Like, at this point, like, we can get whatever we want on the ground. There's no need to throw. <laughs> Man, it was, it was a, a great night for us. And now as we go forward now, the Grace game this week, and Vince, you know all about rivalry games. It's a, it, it's yeah. a, it, you kind of throw all the other stuff out the window. Um, yeah, you do. You do. It, it's who's going to make the fewest mistakes, who's going to make mm -hmm. sure they're good on their assignments, and kind of if there were things that you thought maybe that, that Brook Hill maybe didn't capitalize on, kind of looking forward to Friday. I know you and Brett will be on the call Friday. Kind of what are your thoughts going into this, this one on Friday night? Um, well, defensively um i would like to see you guys get in the backfield more and make more plays there uh like you said y'all were only able to get one sack i didn't even have that recorded i couldn't even remember how many sacks there was but you tell you tell me that there was one uh y'all did a lot of things great de defensively but uh you definitely want to get that pressure on your quarterback disturbing the quarterback is going to be a key to uh, your your success there, uh, just being able to get back there and, and make him make a quick play. Um, offensively, man, y'all y'all did when you finally got on offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, y'all did so many good things. Well, I would say um, probably I, I you know I really liked the. Um, I think y'all ran like one or two, uh, uh, not I don't want to call them screens, like but wide receiver. Um, the the tunnel screen we call it tunnel. Yeah, screen. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, call it screen. Okay, yeah. I I, I like those. Those kind of got the ball rolling a little bit. Um, in in times when you might get in trouble, that might be an outlet to just get get some momentum going. Uh, because we all know like every play won't be successful. That's just the truth. Every play won't be. And, and it's your job as coaches to just keep, keep them in the game and keep them, keep the momentum going. So plays like those little small plays like that, those little dump passes and stuff like that, they really, really kind of build the momentum and, and get the ball moving. So, and again, this is a rivalry game. So I expect for it to be tight. I expect for you because y'all two know each other well. So, um, regardless to which one is actually better than the other, the truth is y'all are going to play each other close, you know? Um, so that's, that's just kind of how rivalries work sometimes. So, um, those, that might help you out offensively. I, I agree with you, Vince. I think that, that the, the more pressure as the defensive line coach, especially I'm thinking, all right, I want to get there a little more often. I, I'm I'm tired of seeing yeah. those sacks, but yeah. offensively, you're right. We have those guys on the outside with, whether it's Ryder Williams or, Colton Richards or whoever it is, just to get them the ball and get them, get them in space and get them a chance, I think is is great. Before we wrap up, I, I do want to mention you and Brett will be on the call Friday, 7.30 kickoff on NetSN. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to yes, be sir. with us, I think, all four games of the year, and I think Brett may be joining you for a couple more times as we go along, or, I, or Keith, either so. way. Uh, but one of, the last thing I want to mention to you, I, I heard, I enjoyed, as, as I was watching the broadcast back, uh, our man Osagia Zigby came in to kick a few times. Man, I, <laughs> I, I enjoyed hearing you and Keith talk about how big, listen, Osagi is a large man and hey, a man. That's the word. <laughs> that's a grown man out there. <laughs> so, so let me tell you, Vince, and, and the people at home may not know this story either. So Osagi was new to Brook Hill last year and he, okay. he's a basketball player. He is a very good basketball player as okay. well. Okay. But he wanted to try football. He'd never done it before. And, and uh, yeah. of course, as we get a lot of times with our boarding students that are new, they want to come out and try it. We let them. But Osagi really stuck it out. We, you know, and his build as a defensive end, we were like, okay, we want to put this guy on the edge. I was just about to say, I was <laughs> like, man, you could put him on the defensive end and, and, and it's over. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, you know, Osagi's been a little banged up, so he hasn't been full go yet. Friday was okay. his, actually his first action. But, Last year, we were in a, he was playing some JV for us just to kind of learn the game. Yeah. And uh, we were out there in pregame, and we were just messing around kicking field goals. And my man Osaki tees the ball up from about 35 away, and I mean just smokes one. I mean right down wow. the middle. And I'm yeah. yelling. I'm at the JV end. I'm like, Coach Ryle, you got to get down here right now. 
And Osagi, uh, back, we're, we're hitting from 40 and 45. I mean, yeah. dead center. So last year in the JV game, uh, I, don't even, I don't even remember what the score was. It did not dictate kicking a field goal, but I was like, yeah. Coach, if we get close, we're kicking. We're going to do it. And Osagi actually hit a 46-yarder <laughs> in a JV game last year. Wow. And uh, wow. so now that, now that he's healthy, he may pick up on some of those kicking duties. And uh, you saw the yeah. leg, but he's, he's one of those guys, Vince, that you let get off the bus first. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, intimidating factor. Yeah, yeah. the rest. <laughs> you go first. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys all sit down. We're gonna let Osagi go. And yeah. uh, but no, I was I was glad to hear you guys. It was kind of funny to me. But Osagi's a great kid and uh, and has a strong leg. And I know that our special teams coach, Coach Harrison, uh, even in practice this morning, as we're recording this on Monday, this morning, Coach Harrison was like, "Man, I'm so glad to have him out, have him out here." The, yeah. When you yeah, kick absolutely. in the end zone every time, Vince, that's a that's a big weapon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we mentioned that we was like, at one point we were like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that ball's still going, still floating <laughs> somewhere out there. <laughs> well, Vince, man, I appreciate you joining me today. And like I said, you and Brett on the call Friday at 7:30. We're looking forward to it, and I hope you had a great time. And I know you'll have oh, a good time this wonderful. week. It's going to be a close one Friday, and I'm I'm excited for it. Oh yeah, it'll be great. All we'll right, Vince. Friday. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. Okay, as we move along now into talking about cross country, uh, we've heard a lot from Coach Josiah White over the last few weeks about uh, the upcoming uh, Warrior Run, the Warrior 5K, a way to get people on our campus. And that finally took place on Saturday. And, and Coach White's going to talk about that. But if you were on campus Saturday, what an amazing thing to see all of the people from all the different schools and around East Texas uh, joining in and being a part of what we're doing there. And uh, hats off to Coach White, uh, Coach Springer, Coach Rodrigo Roca, all those coaches who were involved in helping out with that, uh, all the, the athletic staff working the concession, uh, all the things that go into that. Coach Dawkins was out there. I know that he appreciates all that. Just so amazing to see so many people stepping in and helping. And then for our athletes to have some success, uh, when you host an event, you obviously want to put on a good event, but you want your own kids to compete well. And uh, we'll visit with Coach Josiah White now and how our kids competed on Saturday. Coach White, what a busy weekend for you guys last week with the 5K and the Warrior Run. And I know that that as much as you enjoyed it, probably nice to get a little rest. You were up there pretty late all weekend long. <laughs> yeah, I took a long nap Saturday and Tuesday. I mean, sorry, and Sunday. So, yeah. <laughs> well, nothing wrong with that. And then uh, for all your hard work, we gave you Monday off. Um, we I appreciate, appreciate it. it. <laughs> So talk a little bit about the 5K. That was a big deal that we had pushed out. as the first one, the first time we had done that here at Brook Hill and an opportunity for those who weren't cross-country competitors to come out and, and take part in what we were doing. Talk a little bit about that because – and before I, before I do that, I was told there was somebody who came out and ran the 5K course twice as they were preparing for, I think, maybe a half marathon this year, which is pretty cool too. Talk a little bit about the 5K. Yeah, well, that person you're probably referring to, as far as I know, is is Nate Matei, uh, who does sound for us, who does our music at our football games, and then he stayed and did the announcing and sound for our uh, cross country meet. So, big shout out to him; he did a great job. Uh, but yeah, I know that he ran it at least once. Oh. So, and and it wouldn't surprise me if he did it twice, uh, <laughs> early early in the morning at like five a.m. So. Yeah, he went out and got it prepped for us, uh, ready to go. But, yeah, it really was a cool thing. I think all of our participants enjoyed it. I mean, I had runners because I led the uh, the lead part. And, you know, as runners were coming into the stadium, finishing their 5K, they're smiling and saying, great course. Um, everybody seemed to really have a good time with it. We had 21 entries. Um, so we got a few people, like, signed up right the night before and then got there early and ready to go um but yeah i think it was a really fun thing good atmosphere and i'm looking forward to seeing it grow and uh let's get more and more people out there as the years go by coach i don't know if you met this person or not maybe they introduced themselves to you um but there's a, a website out there a twitter account lone star christian sports network and one of the guys that that works for them actually he came to it was his 200th uh, run and he'd never been to Brooklyn yeah. before and, and so he, that was on Twitter and it was kind of cool of them to post some pictures from the run and had some some outside media presence there which I thought was really cool but so I know there were a lot of people that were really involved in that and were excited 
But talk a little bit about our runners. Talk about the the, the cross country run after that, the Warrior Run. And you mentioned as as I came in to work football Saturday morning, seeing the runners out there and seeing the competitors, and just a tough course. I know a lot of the things I read about it were that was about the layout of the course and how tough it was for the runners. So talk a little bit about that and and how our kids competed as well. Yeah, uh, we kind of like that, and I think that's a, something unique for our course that it is a challenge and that was a lot of the feedback that we got but in a positive way so yeah our course uh, has got a pretty intense hill uh, so we we run up a hill and then you come to what you think is kind of the crest of that hill and then you've got a long another long <laughs> hill uh, actually at the top of our course the highest point it's right next to a road in bullard called hilltop road so that just gives you an idea. Um, you know, it's one of the highest points in that area. So, um, you know, that's a pretty big ascent as far as a cross country meet goes. The nice part is the backside of our course, you're running downhill the whole time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it was on a beautiful campus. Uh, I believe we do have a, a really beautiful campus. And that was a lot of the feedback that we got. This course that is all on our campus and, you know, over 250 acres and people get to run all over it. And then you have that, you have different terrain as well. So you're kind of in the woods at some times, you're going around a pond, um, then you're running around our, our buildings at various times. So that was another thing we got that people really liked. And I, I think it is a unique atmosphere and then what I think was one of the most exciting things about our course is finishing on the track for over 300 meters. Yeah. So you come and you run around to you and you've got everybody in the stadium there um, cheering for you. The way that it's laid out is so many people, they line our pond as runners come in and we've got the back gate open and those people, they just funnel into the stadium and they, get to watch you come and run around the track and cheer for you while the music is going. Um, and that was, I think our kids really enjoy that. The competitors really enjoyed it. It was just a fun, upbeat, energetic atmosphere. I think that uh, we talked about our kids last week and how they were going to be happy to run in their, in, in on their own turf, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, I know there was a lot, a lot of distractions being at home. I think for any sport, when you're playing at home, it's, it's kind of distracting, but how did they respond to that? I know that just uh, the weather was a definitely cooler than it had been the last couple of weeks. Uh, but talk a little bit how, about how your kids and, and our kids responded. Yeah, I thought overall we did a really good job. Um, we had some really standout performances. Uh, again, Anastasia Kanaikina, she had a big PR, 23-second uh, 23 se 23 PR for her. Um, she got seventh in the meet. Uh, our middle school girls won it. They really did well. Um, had a big PR from Lily Shaw, our top middle school girl runner. And overall, we had 15 PRs on the day between high school and middle school. You know, and that's out of 27 kids. So over half of our runners PR'd on our course on that day. I was really pleased and excited about that. So um, looking across the board, from high school all the way through middle school, thought our kids really competed well, had fun, and represented us well on our own home home course. Talk a little bit now as, as the Warrior Run is now over, you get a chance now to really focus on coaching in the season because mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about planning to meet anymore. Yeah. Talk a little bit about <laughs> – uh, yeah, so talk about where we go from here and what's next for the team. I know that you've kind of talked about that schedule of – preparing for the district meet and planning that way. What, what does yep. the next couple of weeks look like for you guys? Yeah. Well, um, I think I may have mentioned this before we break our, our training into phases. And so this is our last week of phase two. And what, what that entails for us is we're going to, we're getting into the, the championship phase. Phase three is really prepping us for district, for our high school runners, for the, state championship meet uh, for our middle school runners. So our focus now, let's, 
let's do a lot more speed work and more what we would call in the cross country world like repetitions. We're doing, you know, repeat thousands on Friday, I believe. It's it'll be our toughest workout coming up. But our kids are now going to be running at race pace and faster pretty much the rest of the season in our hard our hard workouts. So that's that's the biggest difference as we move into our championship phase is we, we get faster and we also take a little bit off the volume. Uh, and it's really proven to, to work well. Like I said, 15 PRs, our kids are responding to the programming. Um, and I like Anastasia can, I can, uh, like she is the right now, at least the picture of what our program is set up to do. And she's done a great job and been really consistent. So I'm happy with where we're headed and, and how we're getting there. And we got a few people that um, are, are newer, like they didn't start in phase one. So they're catching up. But I think they're seeing that, oh, hey, this really does work, uh, you know, such as one of, one of our female runners. She had a big PR again. And that was one. Uh, Ko- Koju Abagunde, she did a great job, and I think she's really seeing. Okay, this this does work. So, yeah, that's where we're headed, and I like where we're going. You know, this week we're supposed to have some hotter temperatures again, and then we move into some maybe some cooler weather the next couple of week. Does that does that really does it have an impact on your training as the weather gets cooler at all? I mean, I know obviously it's I'd mm-hmm. rather run in eighty degrees as opposed to hundred, but is yeah. that do you have to change maybe how you train as it gets a little bit cooler or, or is that not a factor? Um, you know, we try to run as much as we can when it's cool. And I would say, yeah, it does uh, affect us just mainly in the sense of, you know, our athletes in running in the heat. Uh, they're not that's for, I would say, mature runners like seasoned Mature runners can run in the heat. For instance, we went hiking today out of Faulkner Park, and I see some, you know, older mature runners who I know just kind of in the running community, and they're out at 1030 running in the heat. So really, we try to keep our, our kids running when it's cool as possible for their performance. Um, just that heat and them not being used to it, we usually, it, it's just going to cool cause them to fatigue earlier to you know to slow down to just they feel bogged down in that heat so it does affect them but i would say i mean there is some science to heat training there For definitely sure. is uh i just don't think that our our kids yet are, are ready for that um maybe some some upperclassmen high school students that have, have really gotten after running can handle it so we're going to try to get out as early as we can when the weather is cool as often as we can. Fair enough. If I'm going to run, I want it to be 80 instead of 100. Uh, I think we could all agree Amen. with that. Coach, I appreciate you once again. Great work this week. I know it's, it's a lot of a lot of work goes into getting all those people on campus, getting organized. The campus looked great. The course was great. I know I heard all great things from everybody who was there. And so congratulations. Now rest a little bit and just go yeah, out and let's go, let's go win some meets uh, as we go along. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. And so thanks once again to Coach Josiah White for joining us here uh, on the Fire the Cannon podcast. And uh, it's, you know, I think a lot of schools look at cross country as just another sport they do. But to hear how Coach White and and the the details that go into planning, not only the event itself, but preparing the athletes for competition and how – uh, what goes into that. And it's, it's been interesting to hear the talk about the different phases of the workouts and to hear uh, the, the different training models that they're using. It's, it's unbelievable what they're doing. I know if your kids are involved in that, if your kids are involved in that, you definitely understand uh, the work they're doing and how uh, impressive that is, considering the idea of either running early in the morning or in the afternoon when it's hot and the heat uh, and all those other things going on. So, uh, congrats to our cross country team for that. I want to wrap up the show today uh, with Coach Mika Hubbard and the guard volleyball team starts district play this week. They enter this week 
at 25 and 5 overall. And one of the things that, that Coach and I are about to talk about is the difficulty of the district. I, I would argue in any level in TAPS, it's the toughest district in the state in terms of volleyball. You have a team like uh, Prince of Peace up in Carrollton, who is year in and year out involved in the state tournament in some level. You have McKinney Christian, another strong team. Dallas Christian, another strong team. Uh, if you look at the rankings in the top 15, Dallas Shelton is in there. Um, Waco Vanguard is in there. It's just a an amazing district for volleyball. And you're going to hear Coach Hubbard talk about the way that she feels like the team has been prepared and the way the team is confident heading in to their first district contest this Tuesday. Let's talk with Coach Hubbard. Again this week with uh, Coach Mika Hubbard and the guard volleyball team. Uh, another strong week uh, for you guys, Coach. A uh, win at home on Tuesday against Westwood and a win Saturday on the road uh, at Frankston. Talk a little bit about your girls and how they competed in those two matches last week and two more wins as you head into district play this week. Yeah, we we did well last week. We continued to build on the success and the progress that we've been making the last couple of weeks. Westwood was a good challenge Tuesday. Um, we definitely had to figure it out. I think we struggled a little bit to start, but once we hit our stride, um, we looked good. We were strong and uh, finished well. We actually had um, one of our athletes, one of our girls out sick uh, for our Saturday games. So that was another set of challenges and a struggle, but uh, they, they surprised us. They were ready to go and figured out a way to pull it out. So um, I think it was a really good way to end out preseason and to head into district. Yeah, sitting at 25-5, and five, just a, an amazing record. Uh, I think we've talked about this a couple of times, you know, the jump from year one to year two, and I'm not sure what your expectations were uh, at this point, but uh, pretty impressive so far. But now the real challenge starts because uh, I, I think that people who follow volleyball and taps and have kind of seen everybody around, especially in 4A, we, we play in hands down the toughest districts in the state and all the things you all the things you've been doing are just preparing for this next uh this next stretch here that that stretches about six weeks in district play and trying yeah. to take one of those four playoff spots talk a little bit about i know tuesday you open up at home against mckinney and we need a lot of people there for that one tuesday night but just talk about the district overall it's it's really talented we do play in a tough district and one of the toughest um that i've ever had a team compete in um you know our, we had two of our top finishers in our district last week. They met um, late in the playoffs last year, so they all make deep runs. Um, talented players, talented teams, great coaches. And I just think uh, with our experience coming back this year that we have on our team and the fight and the hunger um, to be successful this year, is just it's going to be interesting how it plays out this year. Yeah, you mentioned some of those teams at the top include Prince of Peace out of Carrollton, obviously. Um, yeah. McKinney Christian, who's in yeah. here, who's, who'll be here Tuesday. Dallas Christian, Dallas all those Christian. schools. Mm -hmm. and, and and so the, the gap has definitely closed. I, just as from watching you guys a few times in preseason and seeing, like, well, we talked about that jump, but the gap is different. Talk a little bit about McKinney and what you'll see on Tuesday because it's a that's a it's a tough week, I guess, to start with McKinney and, and Pop back to back. But talk a little bit about McKinney and what you've seen out of them. Yeah, that's starting district back to back with top two of the three teams in our district is going to be tough. Um, but McKinney, we battled with them last year and uh, they've got a lot of the same girls back. Um, and they've got a really strong middle and a great def libero, you know, behind their block. And uh, we made adjustments today in practice um, to make sure we were ready to defend that and yeah i we're ready the girls are ready they're excited i kind of got a feel for them today you know were they nervous were they pumped and ready confident and they're confident they're ready to start district they're they're ready to show everybody what they got you know it's funny because we that's kind of been a theme that, that you and i talked about and then other coaches as well the confidence that you've seen in that group on the floor uh just this year's as opposed to even, even years past in any sport for females, but mm -hmm. they really had that, that next step. 
Let's talk a little bit about kind of, you know, you guys, you mentioned you've dealt with some sickness. You've, you've stayed relatively healthy uh, mm-hmm. throughout the year. You've had one or two out. But uh, I guess now, Coach, you're probably at the point to where you kind of have your rotation figured out exactly what it looks like and, and uh, maybe not as many. I know early on you kind of play some different people from different spots, but talk about some of those, some of those girls who have really kind of stepped up and solidified what their role is for you. Well, we've, we've definitely got some, a couple, a few girls that are really standing out. Um, and of course we've got Gracie Dawson. She's a senior. Um, you know, she played middle last year and this year she's playing on the left side outside and she's just really been dominating out there. Um, and the same with, uh, Juliana Mice. Um, she played middle last year too, and we've moved her and it's kind of untraditional because she is left-handed. Um, usually, you know, the lefties are more comfortable on the right side of the court. Um, but we have her opposite of Gracie on the left side. Um, so one of them is always front row and they've just really taken control and, you know, built their confidence and, um, they put the ball away when we need them to. Um, so they've been really the, uh, our go-to hitters, um, You know, Cassidy, our setter, Cassidy Clark, she's been consistent. She's got her sets um, consistent. So the the hitters are, you know, comfortable with where they're supposed to be and what time, what their timing is. Um, Yeah, but I really don't, I don't want to take anything away from our middles either because they've really stepped up. Um, You know, Blair Brister and uh, Mia, they've really stepped up in the middle. And when we need to mix it up and give our, give Juliana and Gracie a break they're ready to step in and take care of the ball too so it's really an all-around effort um offensively right now no and and, and you're right I think that's been a difference in what we've seen in the last you know even five six seven years at Brook Hill is now it is more of a well-rounded attack and I think that's Mm -hmm. been fun to watch as we've gone on real quick I do want to mention I I saw some uh some of the younger players have had to step in for you maybe some freshmen Uh, I know Gemma James has been there a few times I've seen and with some injuries you have had talk a little bit about how you kind of balance the new younger players coming in and and embracing their role with the with the strong leadership you have from some of your returners yeah I especially with our numbers you know we really have eight in our um, varsity rotation right now Um, so I thought it was really important early on to get some of those younger girls um, that want the experience and are hungry um, for more experience with the varsity team experience on the court, you know, when possible, just in case I don't, I just always want to have a plan B because you just never know, you know, an injury might happen. Sickness might happen, which we've already encountered both already. And then with, you know, Gemma James, you mentioned and Cameron Buskey, another freshman, um, they were able to step in, fill those roles confidently, and really, um, I mean, not be able to, like they weren't deer in the headlights. You know, they were comfortable yeah. stepping in and filling that role and um, really helped out. So, I was you know, them that. yeah, I think that's huge. And I think the other thing about it is, is, is I've seen some of your older players take those younger players under their wings and kind of get them ready. And it's, it helps. It helps when your leadership is encouraging those kids and not freaking out because you're having a place for younger kids. Because quite honestly, yeah. it is rare when younger kids can come in and not have that during the headlights look. Right. Uh, so, all right. So Tuesday night at home, McKinney Christian varsity or JV starts at five. We is that the the start 5:30. time? Five thirty. Okay. So district now five thirty start yes. time for JV on Tuesday. Varsity right after that around six thirty ish. Make mm-hmm. sure you're there. Uh, hopefully. Uh, we'll have a big crowd for that, and uh, man, just super excited about that starting. And I'm ready to see them compete, Coach. I, I think you. that I, I think that that there are going to be some turned heads over the next few yeah. weeks. I um, I we talked a lot about in the beginning of the season, you know, setting goals, and a couple we had a couple of preseason goals, and one of them was you know to have more not even preseason just for the whole season we wanted more wins than we had last season yeah and we checked that off pretty quickly and our next goal was you know going we wanted to hit that 20 win mark and here we are we're not even at district and they've hit that too so we're we have a new set of goals coming going into district 
and um, you know they're just fired up and they're hungry for it. So I'm excited to see what they do. I think what's pretty cool is we're sitting here talking. You know, you mentioned hitting those win totals. I think that is important. As a head coach myself, I understand the concept of, okay, look, the next goal for us, we can't just jump out and say, hey, we want to win state. I mean, that is the goal always, but you have to set the next one. I'm looking at the rankings according to Max Preps, which is probably as good as there are. And just in our district in total, I'm looking at six teams in the top 15 in our district, which is just absolutely crazy, including us sitting at number seven. Uh, Wow. Yeah, Prince of Peace at four, McKinney at six, us at seven, DC at nine, Shelton at twelve, Vanguard at fifteen, and and uh, just unbelievable the talent. And, and uh, but coach, I know you're excited, and uh, we'll, we'll get a big crowd there for you on Tuesday, and and start district off the right way. Can't wait. All right, thank you, coach. Thank you. That was the Hubbard and the volleyball team once again Tuesday. The JV game kicks off at five thirty. The varsity game right after that, sometime around six thirty. So make sure you're there and in the stadium, locked in, ready to go uh, on Tuesday night. should be a fun environment there in Harrington Gymnasium. That's going to do it for this week, and we appreciate you once again for joining in and listening. Uh, however you're listening, whether it's on Spotify, on Apple, uh, from the NetSN app, all those ways, we appreciate you being a part of this. I would like to once again thank NetSN for all the help they're giving us, Brett Swinney and his crew. Download the NetSN app. Uh, if you will download that app, it will get you uh, a lot of things around these Texas, all of our streams that are on NetSN, whether it's volleyball, football, in the winter, where it's basketball, whatever it is. But also, uh, if you are a high school football fan, you can follow uh, scores from around these Texas, around the state, whether it's uh, your local team or teams in our district. You can have a uh, play a part in the Pick'em Contest. And selfish plug here. Uh, I was 10-0 and 0 last week in the Pick'em Contest, so go on there, pick the games. Brooke Hill and Grace is on there this week. There are rankings each week, a lot of things going on, so check out the NetSN app. That's good on either uh, the Android uh, phone or the Apple iPhone. NetSN is the app. So thanks once again for joining in, and we will visit with you next week here on Fire the Cannon.